Mental and behavioral health services can have long waiting lists. If your child is not experiencing a mental health crisis, they may be able to wait to see a professional. Sometimes waiting can be really frustrating and take a toll on everyone. Here are some tips for what to do while you wait for your appointment with a mental health professional. One of the most important things to keep in mind while you're waiting for an appointment is to give as much structure as possible. And so when I say structure, I mean making sure that um, kiddos are waking up at the same time every day, that they have some schedule to their day, that they're going to bed around the same time each evening because they really rely on structure. I think all human beings do, uh, adults included, but for kids it's even more important that you stay as structured as possible without micromanaging. Tramiel likes to run fast. He likes to play with Hot Wheels. Um, about two years old, he had a language um, disability. And I knew as a baby, <laughs> um, babies don't just take off running. So he was very hyperactive. I talked to other mothers. I um, joined a few Facebook groups. So when I went to the mothers, they actually pointed me in the direction of like what doctors do I need to talk to? Who do I need to reach out to? And from there, it came um, behavioral therapy, occupational therapy. It, it opened a lot of doors. You know your child better than anybody else. You know if things are going a little bit off the beaten pathway, if they're not eating as much, if they're getting more withdrawn, if their personality is changing. All of those are signs that you need to kind of perk your ears up and, and, and pay very, very close attention to what uh, your kiddo is doing. At the end of the day, if, you've, uh, if you have that gut instinct that something is going on safety-wise, make sure to reach out. Uh, either call 911, uh, talk to your doctor, your psychiatrist, like let the office know that you need to get in sooner because there are are other avenues of access to care. Um, the comfort of his favorite toy or the comfort of me just cutting on his favorite song in the morning helped tremendously, especially um, now that he's in school age. One of the most important preventative measures you can take to preserve and or um, bet improve your, your kid's mental health is structure. Um, making sure that uh, the physical structure, so when you walk into your house, the more you can kind of declutter and um, decrease the stimulation, be that the noise, be that the amount of things around. Um, kids are, uh, are, are similar to adults in that when we go into chaos, we feel more chaotic. And when we feel more chaotic, we tend to make decisions that aren't, aren't always in our best interest. Um, we also meditate. Um, we're a big Christian household, so we always pray. Um, and then just uh, cutting on classical music at night, just to help him calm down from the day, um, just to ease our minds. Quality time. Um, now that I've graduated college, I have more time for him. It was always work, study, I'm, I'm tired, let's eat, let's go to bed. Um, but now I have more time on my hands. He's like, Mom, I want to cook with you. Or, Mom, let's read this book. It's gotten a lot better, and it makes me smile because I'm like, now I have time for you. I'm not writing a book or uh, <laughs> turning in a thesis statement. <laughs> call kids microphone sponges, right? So they sponge, they, they soak in everything that you're putting out. And then they, like a microphone, they amplify those same things. So they'll soak it in and amplify it out. And so you being very mindful and very thoughtful of how you're handling yourself and how you're dealing with your over uh, stimulation is also really, really key. And so if you do those things, those will help prevent a lot of the triggers from happening so that then the kiddo don't, doesn't have to use the coping skill and then end up in uh, an emergency situation. They told me that it was gonna be times where I am frustrated. It was gonna be times where I did wanna give up or I'm not gonna understand him or um, he's gonna wanna give up as well. So we do have our anger moments where maybe I don't understand what he's saying or what he wants or how he's feeling. Um, so then I have that parent, hey, you know, breathe, um, count to 10 with him, and then try to have him maybe write it out with letters and stuff like that. So I, I love my friends, they help a lot. <laughs> I know it's very difficult to wait for the next appointment. And so when a patient comes in and sees me, either a parent or, or kids or adults, um, I always talk about do the three things, the main three things first. So diet, sleep, and exercise. So as best you can, uh, make sure that when uh, you're getting sleep, that is quality sleep. So 
get that TV out of the room and then exercise it. The more you can run your kids around, the better off you're gonna be. Always take time to sit back and breathe because it can be hard. I try not to let life situations endure with the help that I need to get for him. So I try to make every day um, special so he doesn't focus on what mommy has to go through.